On Living with Machines, we're fortunate to work with a massive amount of digitised newspapers. We're working with tens of millions of pages. And this gives us access to the minutia of everyday life and how that was reported on. Um, and we can excavate those details at scale. Well, the newspaper collections held by the British Library are among the biggest in the world. Um, and newspapers are the place that people report and reflect on events, and they have done for years. So, you know, as a historian, it's the first place you go to, and it's one of the most important sources of information we have about the past. Well, I've spent all my life working with newspapers as historical sources, but I've always done it, well, initially, manually with microfilm, and obviously in more recent years, doing the simple searching. So what was exciting for me was the idea, not that you could search all these newspapers at scale, but you could start to ask questions of them as a collection, or even more excitingly, of parts of the collection. In many ways, this kind of collection is still largely unexplored. And so I feel a bit working with the newspaper at scale is, is trying to go from this ground level to a, to a bird's eye view. Basically, like if you imagine like a city and people walk through the city, they know certain streets or certain buildings really well. But imagine if those people would never been able to look at the city from, from above. So when working with the big newspaper collection, we were interested in thinking about the problems of bias and representativeness. Now, people in AI and machine learning talk a lot about bias. People understand that bias can be a problem. You can't just solve bias with a technical fix. But it's something that you can be aware of and you can try to mitigate in intelligent ways. And that's something we try to do with the environmental scan. What we set out to do in our first way of dealing with it is trying to describe the sample better, see if it was represent representative of, let's say, newspapers as a whole, but maybe also how does this newspaper data relate to society, like which kind of groups or which kind of voices you could say are present in those data, which voices are actually absent. Because the point about the environmental scan is to say there's historical information about newspapers that's been recorded in reference works and you can bring that to bear and you can start to say what's a cheap newspaper and how is it different from an expensive newspaper or a conservative newspaper with a liberal newspaper. Equally is that we can also investigate the language in more detail, like what is actually conservative language in the press or what are liberal, what do liberal newspapers talk more about, what kind of words are more used in liberal or more uh, or in conservative papers, and then also see how this changes over time so you can kind of establish which kind of topics are emphasized by conservative newspapers, for example. When you look at different types of newspaper, both by price and by party, some newspapers have no errors in them. So the digitization has been virtually perfect. And in others, most of the words, when you do word counts or other more sophisticated analyses, most of the words aren't words. They're what we call OCR errors, so mistakes in the digitization process. And the pattern is very clear. Conservative and expensive newspapers, no errors. Liberal and cheap newspapers, lots. Very cheap newspapers, mostly errors. And the, the reason that's so important and so powerful is you don't know that until you start applying these categories that we've brought from the environmental scan. So when you ask a question, you're actually saying what do conservative or, and or expensive newspapers say about many things because they're the things where most of the words are recognisable to your software and therefore to your analysis. As a data scientist and as a historian, this is important information to take with you when you actually want to make any claim based on this collection, because you only look at certain kind of aspects of the past. So the environmental scan is, is a method, but it's also, I suppose, a mindset. Um, it's a mindset that tries to use this idea of source criticism at scale to understand the contours of the collection. When you're working with a data set like the British Library's newspaper collection, you really are now able with the environmental scan to ask the question, which social reality from the past does this newspaper sample represent and does it adequately represent the thing that I need it to in order to answer the research question. But actually that method could be extended to many many other types of historical source. It's just about finding what we call uh, the contemporary metadata, so the original historical reference material that enhances what we know. What we hope is that over time people will begin to have access to the sort of open access resources that we've produced um, and that we hope will allow you to 
reflect more critically on the sort of claims you're making about the past with newspapers as your evidence. Maybe one fun fact is that I'm not sure if I invented the term environmental scan. Actually, I don't know from where it appears or, or, or where it came from. I even I remember using something vaguely at the beginning of the project, but it's quite interesting that actually that's, I think, many ways of many ideas that kind of become maybe important later on. Actually, you cannot really trace them back to anything. So I'm not even, even though maybe I claimed it or other, others kind of attributed it to me, I'm not sure if this, if this is actually the case. So whoever did it, thank you very much.